Mission Log. Day 2 of 100. This is Commander Elias Monroe, recording from Elysium Planitia. For those back on Earth, though you will not receive this message until Day 5, here is an intriguing detail to consider. We are situated approximately 225 million kilometers from your location. This significant distance results in communication delays, as each signal requires several minutes to traverse the vast emptiness of space. As we operate in this remote environment, we currently lack a fully functional communications array, which means we have limited means of relaying our status and findings. In essence, we are functioning as a self-sufficient outpost on an isolated planet, cut off from direct support from mission control or any conventional lifeline back home. Our operations rely solely on our team's ingenuity and resourcefulness as we navigate this silent and inhospitable terrain. Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun, often referred to as the Red Planet due to its iron oxide-rich surface that gives it a distinctive reddish hue. Its atmosphere is incredibly thin, composed of about 95% carbon dioxide, with only trace amounts of oxygen, rendering it inhospitable for human life. A person would lose consciousness within seconds without the protection of a spacesuit. Temperatures on Mars can be highly variable, with daytime highs near the equator reaching a comfortable 70 degrees Fahrenheit about 20 degrees Celsius, while nighttime lows can plunge to a chilling minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit about minus 73 degrees Celsius. Such extreme fluctuations can occur within a single Martian day which lasts approximately 24.6 hours, creating conditions that are harsher than a typical winter day in Antarctica. Yesterday we made history, Project Concorde's first human landing on Mars. The touchdown was rougher than we expected with crosswinds throwing us off course, and our habitat modules are in place. But today, today, the real work begins. Our number one mission this morning begins setting up the communications array. It's not just equipment, it's our voice, our ears, our eyes back to Earth. Every antenna, every relay must be aligned to perfection, one degree off, and our words vanish into space. Deadline day five. Until then, we work in a bubble of isolation. Every problem we encounter is ours alone to solve. Mars decided to make things interesting early. Dust infiltration, not like Earth's dust, this is ultra-fine electrostatically charged, and it gets everywhere. It jammed tool connectors, clogged airlock seals, and slowed every task to a crawl. Mei Lin Zhou, our engineering lid, pulled off a miracle, designing makeshift dust covers from spare thermal fabric. Dr. Zuri Amara reconfigured our filtration system using carbon composites from our supply crates. Small victories. But here small victories keep you alive. Our main achievement today, beginning assembly of our surface vehicle, Concord Airs, six-wheel independent suspension, titanium carbon composite frame, designed to carry us across this uneven world without shaking us apart. It's powered by a hybrid system, solar first, battery backup second. The solar panels are high efficiency, mounted on a mast that will track the sun's path. But there's a problem, that same Martian dust will choke their performance unless we find a way to keep them clean. Our early solution, built in electrostatic shakers to jolt the dust free. In theory, it's brilliant. In practice, Mars will be the judge. And then there's nightfall. Here, cold doesn't mean chilly. It means death. Temperatures drop from minus 20 degrees Celsius to minus 80 degrees Celsius in hours. Running heaters all night would drain our batteries before sunrise. So we're experimenting with a thermal loop system, capturing waste heat from our machinery and pumping it into the habitat's walls. Not perfect, not permanent, but maybe enough to see us through. While the vehicle comes together, another project begins. Our glass dome, not for show, but survival. UV protection, heat retention, a dust-free workspace for tools, and eventually, plants. Right now, it's just a metal skeleton on Martian soil. In weeks it could be the first garden on another planet. Gravity here is just 38% of Earth's. 
It feels like a superpower at first, but the body adapts fast too fast. Without training, muscles and bones will weaken. Our daily regimen includes resistance bands, weighted suits and treadmill harnesses. Mars may change our stride, but it won't break our bodies. Our food supply, calculated for 100 days, with no room for error. We've started ration adjustments based on caloric burn rates. The greenhouse must be operational by day 30, or we'll be counting crumbs by day 80. Morale is steady. We make jokes we probably shouldn't, but humor here is oxygen for the mind. There's no rescue crew in the wings, just us, the dust, and this red planet that doesn't care whether we succeed or fail. If we survive the next 98 days, Mars won't just be a dream, it'll be our second home. Tomorrow we tackle life support assembly and water extraction tests. Every hour matters. Every choice could mean survival, or the end. 100 days, 100 days, to turn this hostile wasteland into something that can sustain life. We are the first, we are alone, and we will not fail. Commander Elias Monroe, signing off.